Hi, everyone. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about headless Chrome and Cloudinary for progressively enhanced dynamic content on the web. Yeah, I was really practicing that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's obviously a mouthful, but hopefully by the end of this, it will actually make sense to you. OK. So in 2006, 73% uh, of websites were found to be reliant on JavaScript for their core functionality. So that means if you were happening to use a device that couldn't run JavaScript or a browser that couldn't, that means for over half of the sites that you would try to visit, you just basically wouldn't be able to do the main function of that website. And with more and more sites being built on front-end frameworks today, I can only imagine that this percentage is probably a lot higher. And although this reliance has allowed us to really build incredible things, there are probably so many web applications that wouldn't exist without it. There have also, unfortunately, been some downsides. So in a lot of cases, performance suffers. So especially when large frameworks are used for sites that could have just been completely static. Accessibility can also become a problem, especially when we're using single page applications and the controls and the navigation may not be handled properly. And then things like progressive enhancement is usually an afterthought because we're usually so concerned with just building the latest and greatest. We tend to forget about what comes before that. But this isn't like a witch hunt against JavaScript, because obviously, like, we're at Jamstack. I can't say <laughs> don't use JavaScript. <laughs> but I think we can actually use JavaScript in a lot of these cases to improve it. So in other words, we can actually use JavaScript to like, fix a lot of the problems that arise from JavaScript. So that's a picture of me. <laughs> a little bit about myself. I'm a front-end developer, which um, after Chris's talk yesterday, I don't even know what that means anymore, but that's kind of what I am. And I'm working on a product called Bycoins, which is a cryptocurrency exchange based in Nigeria. Also, some titles that make me sound really awesome. <laughs> and I also write a blog, which is called Bits of Code. And I want to talk to you today about a project that I work on so in writing my blog, I frequently want to reference uh, and display information from Can I Use. So you can see this lovely embed here. So I actually created this. Um, it's like an embed that you can put on your website or wherever, and it will display up-to-date live information from caniuse.com. And the way it works, if you can kind of see, is that you put this bit of code on your website, and you also include a script, and the script will look for this and replace it with the actual like, lovely interactive embed. But the problem with this is, if someone were to visit my blog without JavaScript enabled, this is basically what they'll see. They'll just see some text that doesn't really give you any helpful information. It's just basically a link to the page. And this isn't just a problem for uh, browsers with JavaScript disabled, which might not be something that you're that concerned about. But if you think about like slow connections, so even if the embed eventually loads, if you're in a really slow connection, it might take a few seconds. And I was trying this yesterday, trying to prepare this talk. And even on the lovely conference Wi-Fi, I was having the same issue. So even if you are somewhere that generally has good internet, you might still have like some slow connections. And then there's just places where JavaScript is just not allowed. So for example, I send all my articles as an email as well, and you just basically can't, can't have that live embed there. And obviously things like readmes or just generally all these other places. So I was thinking, what can I do to solve this problem? And then I had the idea to combine these tools, Puppeteer and Cloudinary, to enhance the experience. So the idea I had was to take the embed page, which is a live HTML document, and use Puppeteer to convert it into a screenshot, then host that on Cloudinary, and then use that as the fallback instead of the plain text, which will kind of make more sense when I go through it now. So instead of anybody ever seeing this text that just links to the page, they'll see an image that will eventually be replaced with the live embed. 
So let's just look at some code to see how that worked. So the first step is using Puppeteer to take a screenshot of the page. So if you've used Puppeteer, you're probably already um, familiar with how this works, but you just import the node library, and then you create a new browser, and I'm just having some settings of what I want the viewport to look like. Then I just load a new page, passing the URL to the embed, and also having a setting saying that I just want um, Puppeteer to wait until the page is fully loaded, everything has finished executing before we move forward. And then I just take the screenshot and close the browser. Then the next part is the Cloudinary part. So again, just importing um, the Cloudinary node module and setting up any configuration. And then I'm using the upload stream method to upload that screenshot we got from the previous section. And then when it's done, I have the URL to the image. So now when I'm using the embed code on my blog, instead of having this fallback text, I can just replace it with an image. So if there's no JavaScript included, the image itself at least still exists. And even better, what I do, because we're using Cloudinary and you have access to an image in any, any like, form, <laughs> I'm using the picture element and passing in like a WebP or a PNG or a JPEG or just an image element if that doesn't exist. And all of that is done with Cloudinary, and I don't have to like, do any of that like, image um, changing of the stuff. <laughs> yeah, so now, like I said, when you visit, you'll just see this image, even if you don't have like, JavaScript enabled. So as you might have noticed, a lot of um, what I'm talking about here, Puppeteer and Cloudinary, they're node modules, which means they can't directly be used by the website that you would go to, to generate one of these embeds. So what I did was um, wrap it all up in a microservice, which I'm not exactly sure what a microservice is, but I'm calling it a microservice because it sounds cool. <laughs> and, um, and this is probably what the real power of Jamstack is. So we can actually just abstract all these really powerful tools, and you just have a single endpoint that does all the magic for you. And this is, OK, it's actually working. <laughs> so this is kind of what it looks like. If you go to caniuse.bitsofcode.de, so visit my website, <laughs> um, you can just select how you want the embed to be, and then you just click generate, and hopefully it'll work. I mean, it's a video, so I know it works. But <laughs> um, then you can just copy, and you can get all this lovely information. And then, um, so prior to 3 AM this morning, <laughs> the microservice was actually hosted on Heroku. But um, I was inspired by all the talks yesterday, and I was having some conversations. And I thought, oh, I should actually make this a Netlify function. So because I'm jet lagged, I started doing this at 3 AM in the morning. And I broke everything. <laughs> and you can ask the people at Netlify. I had like four different people trying to help me solve some problem because there was some issue. But it works now. So if you go to the site, you'll see I'm actually using a Netlify function. So it's actually truly Jamstack now. And um, this is basically what it looks like, um, kind of shortened. But you can see that it's pretty simple. Take screenshot and upload screenshot are the two parts that I showed you before. And yeah, that's basically all there is to it. And I'm even thinking about how I can improve this even more. So for example, like creating a screenshot for every single um, feature that exists on Can I Use, and just having a URL on Cloudinary that anybody can go to. And because it can be updated periodically, it's almost like having a live embed in an image. And there's just so much that we can do with this. And I will hopefully like, work on that maybe at 3 AM tomorrow. <laughs> and yeah, thank you.